matter what we do with this, my nose looks huge. great you're <laughs> staring blankly off into space you know yeah right luckily, <laughs> you know had a few gummies before we started perfect well i'm just gonna jump in then uh welcome to Unstage with dave nystrom uh i'm dave nystrom and uh tonight i uh, asked a good buddy of mine to pop in and do the show and he very graciously agreed he is uh, an actor, a uh, former professional athlete, and a hell of a human being, Mr. Dan Payne. How's it going, Dan? Good, Dave. How you doing? Is this like a weird episode of uh, Nick Cage's Face Off for you? It's a li- <laughs> so I discovered uh, something uh, that I, I don't know if I knew this in all the time that I've known you, which is, God, got to be coming up on 20 years now. 15? 15 couple years? A couple decades almost, yeah. Yeah, right. it's Holy been a while. Shit. Um... I knew that you lived in Australia oh. for a while, but I did not know that you moved from Australia to the UK, and that's where you started your acting career. Yeah, my brother and I, I, went, I moved to Australia after I retired from pro sports from volleyball. Um, I called my brother, and like, I'm done, my body's done, what do we do? And he's like, I'm starting a, a photographic concession in Australia, I'd love you to come help me do it. I'm like, I'm in. Um, and we did that for a while, and we had aspirations of being actors and, and creating movies on our own, and he was way more entrepreneur than he was in, into getting into the acting, and I was way more not an entrepreneur. Um, so I moved to England, and I decided that uh, before I got home to Canada, I wanted to get some experience, fall on my face uh, somewhere far, far, far from home. And uh, I had an ancestral heritage visa that, that gave me five years of falling on my face in the UK. And uh, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out, like doing weekend warrior stuff, acting classes and whatnot and then started getting some auditions and some uh, and some roles and yeah the uk was the starting point but again like i said it was so i could fall on my face there and no one would know <laughs> and just to jump back from that you you started in was it europe you were a professional vol- volleyball player right when you were a young man yeah i played in yeah 300 years ago i played in holland and uh I had played at the University of Calgary, and I tried out for the National B team, and, and things were, you know, the doors that opened the most when I was younger were athletic, uh, sporting ones, and I wanted to ride that roller coaster as far as I could, and I ended up in, in Holland playing volleyball professionally, and then my body quit on me uh, at a young age. Just, I, just, I wasn't the greatest, you know, there's those players who can show up, and they'd be smoking a cigarette, and be like, hey, it's game time, and they stub out their cigarette and then they're amazing i wasn't that guy i was there an hour early stretching doing skills that i didn't work well at and just last one to leave type guy so they took a toll on my body but i loved it i wouldn't i don't regret a second so so and then you were in the uk for you had a, you you had a five-year visa how long were you actually there for uh just under i was there for four years okay and then you, you yeah. moved from there directly to vancouver I came back to Calgary. Uh, I had no, the last experience I'd had in Canada was out of Calgary in the university uh, realm. My mom still lived in Calgary. I, I wound up living in the basement at her place, trying to figure out which way it was uh, up. And I knew I wanted to go to either Toronto or Vancouver for acting because I had gotten a taste for the whole world in the UK. And um, I was going to leave right away, but then I wet, I met my, I wet, I wet my pants. I met my eventual wife. Um, in Calgary and I didn't leave immediately and uh, the first place I decided to go to was Vancouver and when I landed I was like I'm home and uh, I just I knew immediately when I stepped off the plane I was taking a cab down uh, Granville Street and I just went this is home I love this place I don't know I'm never I just never left I, I stayed and I never left and my wife at the time girlfriend moved out to Vancouver and then the rest is history Vancouver is where you started your acting career. Um, what was your uh, favorite role that you've had over the years that, that uh, you shot in Vancouver? 
Uh, well, most recently I got to be a part of a movie, an independent feature called Devil in the Dark. And it was written by a friend of mine, Carrie Dixon. And we became friends over the course of, actually before this movie started, we wound up running the score clock in our kids' hockey game together from opposite teams. And uh, oh, this doesn't say too much about me, but I was like, <laughs> hey, man, uh, does your coffee want any Baileys? I hadn't met him before, and I'm like, you want any Baileys? And he's like, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> so we bonded over Baileys, um, and as we're hanging out, he's like, you know, I, I wrote this movie that it's, it's got a green light and stuff, and I think you'd be perfect for it. And I met the director, and the director wasn't 100% sure, and then it turns out the director you know, saw some of my stuff and said, yeah, let's do this. And the collaborative nature of that film turned out to be one of my favorite experiences of all time. I love the character. I love the the shooting. We shot out in the forest in Kelowna in interior BC. So it wasn't quite shooting in Vancouver, but it was, you know, BC in Canada. And uh, I just, it was, a, it reminded me why I do this whole job for the people, for the connections, for the experience and for the, for the storytelling. And what year was that? Re- has that been released? That was like uh, two, maybe three years ago. Okay. Um, yeah, it was on iTunes. I think it's still available. I know it was in Walmart, which was kind of nice. Very cool. And uh, I, I know you've done a number of projects since then. Um, in the past few years, one of the biggest projects you've been involved with is uh, Disney's The Descendants, which uh, has now done three movies and uh, where you play the Beast. What was that experience like? That was a huge honor. It was scary at start to be, you know, to be stepping into the role of a, a classic iconic character. But Kenny Ortega and the whole production team helped me uh, find what they said was, we're going to do a beast specific to the world that we're creating for our Disney descendants. It doesn't have to relate to or be anything. It can be standalone, which was great. And they helped me along every step of the way. And uh, to be a part of those giant, colorful sets with all that song and dance and those kids, like I said, I think I've told you this before, the, the triple threat talent level of all of those kids is mind-blowing. They can sing, dance, act like nobody's business. And uh, I just stand back and watch in awe and try to remember my 17 dance steps that I had to get done, which they gave me three weeks to try and figure out. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you'd think three weeks would be long enough. <laughs> I did enjoy I did enjoy watching you dance. I've, I've seen the movies. Uh, my kids love them. I did enjoy watching you dance. Probably my favorite parts uh, were, your, were your dance moves. Um, the robot was amazing. Um, and uh, what else in terms of like uh, a, a different, because it's a completely different fan base than a lot of the other projects you've done. Um, how's that been interacting? Have you had a lot of uh, opportunity to interact with uh, any of the kids that have, uh, that are fans of the movies? Yeah, I mean, start with, like, just to mention the kids, my, it's something my kids can thoroughly enjoy, and I'm proud of it, extremely proud of it, and I'm proud of the story and the messages that, that the movies can convey to everyone. So I love that for my kids alone, and then on top of that, like you said, the, the fan base for me uh, grew crazy uh, exponentially for a while with that Descendants and Disney fan base, and they're amazing. They're very, is fervent a good word? Like, they're very... Uh, hmm. they love those movies. Rabbit? Like, they can sing every song. They can do every dance move. They're, and I'm the parent character, you know, not, I, I wouldn't say token, but definitely like, it's about those kids. And to be as uh, welcomed into that world by those fans as much as they have has been spectacular. And I'm very honored. So I'm very grateful to the huge and ever-growing fan base of very, uh, Fervent. I need a better word, Dave. But, rabid. You know, like, rabid. Powerfully uh, excited about the movie. The fan base is just, they follow with with fervor. <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of words, Dave. I'm it, having a stroke. Exuberance. I'll be right back. <laughs> um, so you've done that, and you've because of your physical stature, you've done. You're you're six foot five. You're about two twenty five, two two hundred thirty pounds. Um, you get cast as a lot of uh, either aliens, a lot of space creatures. You were in the Stargate series uh, multiple times as different creatures. And um, uh, Cabin in the Woods was a, a huge, huge production that you were involved in uh, as one of the uh, zombie family, the the Buckners. Uh, how was that experience working with Joss Whedon? Joss is. He's a wizard. He's a genius. And uh, quirky as all get out, like a unique human being. 
uh, by far. And I had a couple of really cool experiences, you know, all dressed up as Matthew Buckner as a zombie going to craft services, and there he was, and he was very complimentary. And uh, he has an extremely sharp sense of humor uh, and quirky. Like I said, very, very quirky, but just it was so cool to be complimented uh, by him. You know, I know his prowess and his stature in the film industry, so that felt like a, a pretty big win in the, in the film career for me. And then to be a part of production that, that big, and Chris Hemsworth was there. I met and hung out with him, obviously chasing him around as a zombie for a few months. Um, and on that movie, he booked... He, we were talking. He goes, "Yeah, I just booked this uh, this thing called Thor. I, you know, I hope it works out. It, it's uh, it's a bit a bit of a stretch, maybe, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, it worked out, Chris. Just so you know, seems, <laughs> seems to. Him. Um, but he was an he's an Aussie guy. He's just he's a down to earth, and I assume he still is. But he was a very down to earth, generous human being. There was nothing. He was a huge star. He had that it factor from the second I met him." Uh, but he never flaunted it. He never used it. He was just one of the boys and just a great guy. Very cool. Um, and uh, another huge movie that you were involved in uh, was uh, The Watchmen, where you played Dollar Bill. Um, you've told me the story before about how you got cast as Dollar Bill, but uh, I think it's a very interesting way to uh, that you made your way onto that uh, onto that film. Let everybody know, if you don't mind. For sure. I wound up being the reader for the casting of that movie, and I got to meet Zach uh at that time and uh you know i meet all these high level a-list vancouver talent would come in it was it was amazing for me to be in that inner sanctum of seeing them do their work uh and then just raise my game to help make sure that i could help them deliver their best and i got to chat with uh zach and the casting director between the actors and during quiet times and who wound up wanting to play Dixie cup football and, and just fill time doing goofy things in between the, the quiet times of actors coming in and kind of bonded enough where at the end of that reading, uh, when I left, you know, I said, thank you so much. It was an honor to be here, et cetera. And uh, about an hour after I got home, the casting director called me and said, Hey, Zach wanted to know, you know, if he felt like it, he liked your stature and your size and your acting ability. If you wanted to be dollar bill in this movie. And I was, it took me all of point zero 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 one seconds to say yes, you know. Putting the superhero costume on must have been one of the uh, more exciting experiences I can imagine in a uh, in a Zack Schneider movie. Yeah, who doesn't want to wear a cape, even if it gets caught up in a swinging door and you get shot for it? <laughs> hey, can I throw something else, Dave, about Chris Hemsworth? Yeah, absolutely. So, rap party... Uh, I'm finally, you know, I'm always there five hours before everybody and, and an hour and a half afterwards. I walk up to Chris at the rap party. I'm like, hey, man, I just want to say it's been an honor working with you. You're a champion. It was really cool. And, and, and thank you, man. He's like, that's great. Yeah. Sorry, who are you? Because he had never seen my face. He had never seen <laughs> what I look like uh, other than as a giant uh, tortured zombie. <laughs> but he was still he was still friendly and gracious. Dude, he was just straight up gracious. No matter what, like, yeah, he could have been like, oh, my God, yeah, hi, thanks, can I have some, I mean, yeah, he's just a good guy. Very cool. My, uh, wife says, my wife says the best thing I've ever done is get her a chance to hug him, so. <laughs> Not, uh, you know, a couple of children and, and marrying her, just. I think those are up there, they're, I think yeah. they're up there, but, uh, yeah, no, the Chris Hemsworth hug definitely, I think, is still first prize. You know, I uh, I'm a married man myself, but I, I would take a hug from Chris Hemsworth. You know, he's a he's a handsome man. He's a good looking fellow. I'm not complaining. I get it. That guy's chiseled, handsome, sense of humor. He's annoying. I mean, amazing. <laughs> so what's coming up next for uh, for Dan Payne? I mean, nothing's coming up for anybody right now. But uh, is there anything that's in the can that's going to be coming out, or anything that uh, you have been filming that's going to be resuming? Hopefully, when this whole thing gets sorted out. Yeah, uh, well, I hope everybody, I mean, I hope there's a massive drive of cr uh, amazing content as we all sit here, the creative world starts taking the time to, to make new products. But I was very fortunate. I just wrapped uh, Hallmark uh, Matchmaker Mystery, The Poison Pen, just before the pandemic kicked in. And uh, that should be released on April 25th. And I did that with Danica McKellar, who some people might remember as Winnie Cooper from Wonder Years. And uh I don't know about you, but I had a crush on her back then. It she was pretty kind of surreal to meet her. I think she was the boyhood crush. Of, and then be her love interest in her Hallmark series. So Yeah. Uh, 
I think she yeah. was the boyhood crush of pretty much everybody of our generation. We're we're the same age, so yeah, it's uh, she was the one. So that's coming out on the twenty fifth, and uh, I'm I'm proud of what we did on that. I think it was you know I mean I'm I love being in the Hallmark world. I enjoy those movies. My mom loves them. I love the fact that my mom and all her friends can watch them. I love that they're about specifically hope and love, and so I I hope people watch that one and enjoy it. And then I just, uh, I was finishing a guest star on a, a new Canadian show written by Susan Nielsen, who was actually a part of giving my first ever lead in a series on Alice, I think, way back in the day. Uh, but she wrote this new, very smart, witty uh, show called Family Law, starring Jewel State. And uh, I'm one of the guest stars in the first episode of the first season, and we got shut down before I finished. So hopefully there's that to go back to. But I, I hope people keep an eye out for that. It's a Canadian, it's going to be a full Canadian show, and it's, it's very funny. It's uh, the first script made me laugh out loud, and uh, you know sometimes that's hard to do when you're just reading the words and trying to focus on what you need to bring to the character. But it would it would uh, it would make me laugh just reading. So I'm excited to see it in full production. Um, well, fantastic, man! Thank you so much for doing this uh, again. I really appreciate it. Um, always a pleasure to to catch up. Uh, we don't talk enough. I wish we uh, st- still lived in the same city. It's always fun hanging out with you, but. Um, in lieu of that, this has been fantastic. Well, thank you, man. I love you, buddy. I appreciate every chance we do get to talk, and I'll take any time uh, you have to hang out. If you're back in Vancouver, you know you got a place to stay, and uh, I appreciate you and having me on here, man. Thanks, pal. Love you, too. Um, Dan Payne, everybody.